Hi, I'm Boone. This is Boone Slot Car Garage. And tonight, we're going to go ahead and make some scenery. So, we have, down on the layout, I went ahead and done all this area. And we need to complete the center section. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use polystyrene foam board. We're going to cut the board, get it all placed and fitted. We're going to shape it. We're going to create rumble strips. And we're going to complete it in grass. All right? So let's do this. All right. So first off, in order to make this, I use the polystyrene foam board. Now this is the one inch thick insulation board that you can pick up at a hardware store. Um, it's got the Pink Panther on it. Must be pretty cool. So what we're going to do is I went ahead and I figured out the area that I need. And I went ahead and scribed it all out on this and cut it out. Now, being that it's kind of a complex shape, I'm not doing it in one single sheet. I'm making multiple sheets so I can go ahead and put it all in. Uh, it just works better for myself and for the type of layout that I have. So, we'll go ahead and pick it up from there. Okay, so I went ahead and I cut all my polystyrene and got it fitted for the track so like I said I was gonna make this in multiple multiple pieces I have the center section here and I went ahead and made this little uh, leg off to the side in two different pieces it just is a little bit easier that way that way you don't have this complex shape that you're trying to transfer onto a board and get it all cut right uh, Again, up on top here, you can see there's multiple different pieces that are fitted in. And the reason why that I needed to do that is because my table is actually uh, is suspended from the ceiling so I can store it. So I went ahead and got this all down there. And, uh, and it's all shaped in, roughed in. Went ahead and took a Sharpie pen and put a black line right here where the track level's at. That way I can go ahead and pull this off and shape it away from the layout to save with a, a lot of mess and then bring it back in and see how our shape is. The other thing that we need to keep in mind is that we're gonna go ahead and do rumble strips. And I'm gonna figure, I'm gonna do a rumble strip from about here to here on this corner on the inside and then also one on the outside over here. So we're gonna go start here and I'm gonna carry that all the way over to that rock wall that is there. So let's go ahead and get this off and when we pick it up, we'll start shaping some board. Well, here's our board. Now you can see where that line's at. So instead of sitting there and trying to grind down to it, I am gonna take my trusty blade and we're gonna go ahead and cut on this. So, one thing you wanna be careful with, guys, is <laughs> it is a razor blade, so it's really sharp. So, first off, let's just go ahead and start carving down on this thing. We know where our edge is there. And we're just gonna follow this around. A little bit rough it's okay because we're going to come back with sandpaper and whatnot and get it all smoothed out and looking good but this gets a good chunk of material off where we don't have to contend with this stuff so i'll go ahead and keep on shaping this and when we come back we'll start sanding so we went ahead and did the rough cut all the way down on the sides here. Um, a little ugly, but I think it'll work. Second off, now to kind of final it out, go ahead and I take, a, this is like 36 grit paper. It's gonna cut on this really fast, but if you use a block, it's just a block of wood. And grab this, get some of this other stuff out of the way. Get this piece out of the way and keep in mind where our line's at. Just go ahead and 
sand that down. You can see how that just cuts right down on it. So, I'll go ahead and give that a, a once over there and get it right to our line. And we'll put it back on the layout and we'll see how it looks. All right, you guys. So I went ahead and got it all rough sanded in. Um, before I set it up on the layout though, I went ahead and took some 80 grit sandpaper because when you hit it with 36, it gets, it's, it's a mess. I mean, I was covered in this stuff. So I went ahead and kissed it lightly with 80, uh, with the 80 grit to smooth it down and kind of takes the, the flakiness out of it. So if we look at the layout, you can see how it's, it's lined up pretty good. We went ahead and took it down to that line that I had scribed on it and you know it it's right there with the track so that's what we're going after if you put a little bit of weight on this you can kind of get an idea how it's going to look so we're going to put rumble strip in on the inside of these two corners and if you notice i'm trying to keep this area this line and stuff real crisp all the way through so when i come back to do the rumble strip um it's all going to look uniform. When it comes over onto the existing layout that I already have down, my existing scenery, went ahead and blended down into this area. Now, there is grass right on the edge. It's no problem. We can go ahead and sand this back when we fill it all in, and we'll just blend it on through. So never think that you have to do one big gigantic area all at one time. You can always do it in piece portion, come back, just kind of blend it into your existing work and keep on going. Um, now from this area right here to the other mark is our rumble strip. But from here to here, I'm gonna have an exposed edge. So it's gonna have like dirt down in here. I'm gonna go ahead and rough this up a little bit because when we put our, our paint down, I wanna have a little bit of texture so when that grass comes through, it, it gives it a little bit more realistic look to it. And <clears throat> I've been looking at this and I think we're gonna go ahead and put a hill in here as well. I mean, it's all nice and flat and that's all good and all, but I think we need a hill. So I kind of looking around, I think I might put one up in here or maybe down in that corner. I haven't quite decided yet, but I'm sure when uh, we pick this up, I'll make up my mind by that point. So I'll go ahead and get this off. We'll do a little bit more fine tuning and we'll pick it up from there. I went ahead and did a little bit more sanding on this. Got my texture put into here. So when we go to paint it, it'll have more of a more of a roughness, more of a realistic look to it. And again, went ahead and added a hill. So when we set that back in there, sets right back in the shape, we got our hill. So what do we need to do now is the same way that we shaped everything else, I'm gonna come in here and I'm just gonna start chiseling it and get all these sharp edges out and contour everything in so it's nice and uniform and just kind of flows, looks, looks natural. So let's go ahead and we'll bring it over here in the same type of way that we started going around the edges. You get your X-Acto knife out and just start cutting on this. You know, there's no real right way or wrong way. You just, just go for it, guys. So just start cutting away and knocking all those edges out just like that so if you want to go ahead and make a rock face and make a rock face to it I just kind of want to make a big mound so and the reason why we have the the different type of shapes and everything is that I want it to just kind of split all up so I'm going to take more of that one off. Get this guy to contour down into it. So I'm going to keep on chiseling away at this. And when we come back, we'll take a look and see how our hill turned out. Okay, so we got it back down on the layout. So let's check it out. 
So we went ahead and got our hill going and I got it all shaped and whatnot. Um, again, it's the same way that you would uh, shape the foam. You just go ahead and take that 36 grit, start hitting it down, get the contours and everything that you want. And uh, the little bit of ridging and whatnot, when we come back through with our filler, which is the drywall uh, joint compound, we'll fill all those gaps so it'll be all nice and smooth. So at this point, we got it back down. Uh, it's about time to go ahead and start gluing it back to the, to the layout board. So we come back, we'll have it laid down and uh, we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so we got all glued down on the layout. I'm on the layout. And <laughs> that's one of the good things, you know, if you guys are building a bigger area, make sure you're building a, a table that you can climb up on and bounce around and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, so you can get stuff done. So, all right, so what we got, so we went ahead and we have our foam all uh, glued down and we need to make this rumble strip. So our mark is right there and our other mark is over here. And what I normally do is I go like an inch. So I take my trusty little ruler out and I just go ahead and mark every inch all the way around it. And that way it gives me a reference so I can uh, get my marks in there. And our last one's right here. So what we have is, I'll just grab a piece of track. And you have that sitting down there, you can see your space. Preference really depends on what you want it to look like. So. I generally go up about an inch. So with that in mind, I'll go ahead and just take my hand and scribe a line onto it. And this is just for reference for myself so that when I burn in the rumble strip with my soldering iron, I have a guide to go off of. Bring this around. When it comes down to the end, like right here, here's our end mark. Go ahead and bring that down. I'll just bring it up to that mark. Same thing over here. And we'll just bring it right there. So, what we'll do now is I'll go ahead and get the soldering iron fired up and we'll get this rumble strip cut. Okay, so we got our trusty solder iron and we're gonna go ahead and start burning in our, our rumble strips. Now I have an adjustable solder, solder iron here and I run it just about, you know, right on 700. Uh, a regular solder iron would work as well. You just can't control the, the amps and the heat with it as well. Um, when you're, when you're doing this, remember you got one shot at it. And so, you know, double check things, make sure it's exactly the way that you want to have it. Now, when you're soldering something or when you're using the solder iron on this guy and the foam has been sanded, it's softer. The area up here is definitely firmer. So when you solder it or when you use the soldering iron on it, when you're burning it, it burns a lot faster on this. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. So what I normally do is I start down here at the end and we'll bring it all the way down so that when the track's up against it, it doesn't stop. It goes all the way down through. And go ahead and we'll bring this right up. And this is a hard angle, but we can do it. So just bring that on through. 
right there. Now, our dots, just go ahead and bring it from right there, straight down, all the way to the floor. And we've got it all burned in there on both sides all the way through. Now what we got to do is just grab a hold of your joint compound and just start spreading it on. So all these areas that you had spaces and whatnot, just grab this stuff, goop it on there. And just smooth it all out. Get your down all those cracks and creases, any anything that you didn't really like how it turned out, you can make up for it with this stuff. So I'll go ahead and keep on doing this. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and start the painting process. All our uh, joint compound laid down. And we filled all our gaps. We gave the flat area, give it a little bit of texture. And uh, that'll help in our final product. So all we can do now is let this stuff dry. So I'm going to call it a night. And we'll pick it up tomorrow. And we'll start our painting process. Okay, so we've waited for all our filler to, to finally dry. So at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and take some of this brown that I've made up. Now I use like a burnt umber. I use a little bit of black, a little bit of white. And I throw a little bit of yellow into it. And then I make it into a wash. So it's like overly reduced. That way when you brush it on, it's not consistent it kind of gets a blotchiness type of type of look to it and it makes it look a lot more realistic when it dries so just take this and just start applying it now we want to be careful of the area down in here because it's our rumble strip so what I'm going to do is just kind of rough it in here and then when I come back I will uh, just kind of do a little bit of detail work around those edges. But with this, just go ahead and load it on. Don't worry about it if it's consistent or not. And uh, as it dries, it'll give it a look a lot like it is right over here. So you can tell that it's not real consistent. It has more of that natural look to it. So I'll go ahead and finish this portion up. We'll come back and we'll start doing our rumble strip. So we have the browns pretty much all dry and you can see how it looks. It gives that real natural. We got light spots and dark spots and kind of an inconsistency. So when this is exposed on the side, it's gonna look, you know, like the natural thing. So next what I do is I go ahead and just take some white, just straight white, and I do all my white first on my on my rumble strip. So I'll get in here on the edge where we went ahead and used the uh, soldering iron. And it makes a natural trough right there. And we can just follow that through like so. And then go ahead and pick every other square to go ahead and do your white and you come back with your other color i'm using a blue you could use a yellow you could use a red heck you could even go a, a red and blue on uh on the rumble strip instead so i'm gonna go ahead and finish up this go ahead and do all the white and uh we come back we'll put the blue on it come in with my blue and fill up the other squares now this is a blue that i went ahead and custom mixed um Again, you can use any color you'd like. I mean, if, if you don't want to use white, you could use the yellow. There are tons of different colors. Sky's the limit. Uh, only suggestion I have is if you do make a special color that you mix enough that you can use it on your whole entire layout if you choose to do that. Because if you run out, 
and you have to remix the color and you didn't write down exactly what you did and you're kind of going off memory, it makes it really hard to try to match that color again. So with this, the blue, I'm just going to come in and just color in those other squares. So when it gets up into these tighter areas, I'm going to go ahead and whip out a, a smaller brush. But for the general areas, I just go ahead and hit it, hit it just like this. So I'll go ahead and finish this all up and we'll pick it up on the other side. Okay, so we got everything laid out. Um, it's all dry. And if you can see around the edges, I go ahead and I put some black down. That way when your track is up against it and it goes down in there, you don't see any uh, different color. It all kind of blends in. So it helps with that visual. Uh, so at this point, what we're going to do is going to go ahead and lay down some static grass. So what I've been using is just wood glue for my grass. And what I've noticed is that with the wood glue, it seems to give it a stronger bond. So it, it doesn't come off as easy that I've experienced with just regular PVA. So what we're going to do is I'll go ahead and get some glue down on the, on the layout here and, uh, what I do is just use a big brush, big old glop of this stuff, and just brush it on. Now I'm not going to bring it all the way down to the edge because I kind of want a little bit of a dirt berm going on. And I'm not going to be real uh, picky about if there's any voids or anything else. That way it just kind of gives a little bit more of a natural look to it. Um, sometimes the grass is a little bit spotty, so we need to blend it into here, into our existing that we have. So we'll get that. Go on through. So I'll keep on doing this. When we come back, we'll start putting down some grass. Okay, so we got our glue all down. Put somewhat of a generous amount of glue down. And we grab our little static grass machine. Now, if you've used one of these, then you know what to watch out for. If you haven't, let you, let you know a little trick. Uh, the ends of these things, even though you, you don't have very big battery in the inside, they can give you a hell of a wallop. So, if you're ever using one of these, just be careful with it. Because I had this thing knock me one time the other day and uh man i felt it in my chest it was it was unreal so it has a little wire in the inside and you ground here so you just want to be cautious with those when you're when you're using these little guys now what i'm going to do is is use about three different styles of grass i have kind of a lighter green a medium green and a real dark green and uh they're all about, this is like three mil. I believe I have some four. And uh, ooh, this is the four mil. This is a little bit longer stuff. This is seven mil here. So it's going to give kind of a depth of, uh, you know, just a little bit longer grass and weeds or whatnot. So what I normally do is I'll come in with my darker grass. So I'll start out with, with this to get kind of the base unit going on. And uh, be careful of this guy. And we'll just go ahead and sprinkle some of this in. And put our lid on it. What we're going to do is, this is your ground. So you want to make sure it's grounded on the area that you're going to apply grass on. And so, since <clears throat> we're going after kind of a natural type of thing, you're your darker grass we're going to want to kind of just spread it around a little bit now i don't go real crazy with this it's just kind of my bottom layer but it gives it kind of a blotchiness to it and tends to work okay so i'll kind of do that and then it's going to be a little bit of depth in some of those areas where we want a little bit more shadowy Get it down in there. 
And you notice also I didn't coat the whole entire thing with glue to start out with. That way I can work this area and then I can come back and just keep on going and just kind of blend it in as I go. So let's see, grab some over here. The, the darker green down and you can see how I just kind of shaded in certain areas. You can also start to tell where it's not going to stick at. So we have a little bit of blotchiness and whatnot on our hill. So and what I'm going to do now is come in with a little bit longer. This is my long stuff. It's about seven mil. And we're going to kind of go around the edges and give it kind of that, that idea of some longer grass here and there. So just to give a little bit of depth and kind of come into it and you can already see how that's already starting to take shape so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take care of this little spot we'll come back and we'll get ready for that light green what this is gonna do is just give it a little bit more highlight and it, you can really start to see it when it goes on it's pretty cool so We'll get that over here. And again, it just comes down to preference, guys, whatever you're going after. So, get this right down in there. And there she is. So, don't look half bad. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and take care of the rest of it. When we come back, we'll do a little bit of cleanup. So we have all our grass down and ah, it looks pretty good. So you can see how I didn't really do with one solid color. I, you you kind of go with a little bit of blotchiness and stuff like that. It gives it, I feel it gives a little bit more realistic. Um, Maybe it's the mere fact because I can't grow a perfect lawn even in my own house. I'm not sure. So, but one thing you'll notice is that we got a lot of grass over on the edges and stuff like that. Well, if you've bought static grass and, and whatnot, you know it's not exactly the cheapest material. So, what I do afterwards is I take an old sock and I got my trusty little vacuum and I'll go around and suck it all up. So, and it sucks it up into the sock and then I can go ahead and reuse it. So I can put it in a little container like that. And when I do my next project, I can go ahead and use some of that grass. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit. Um, it's a little loud, so we'll probably just kind of skip that part. And I'll show you once I turn it off on how easy it is to get it out. Alrighty, so there we go. I went ahead and sucked up a little bit of grass and I'll just go ahead and put it in a little container. You see how that just works really good, you know? So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this and when we come back, we'll wrap it all up. Okay, so we got our cleanup all done. The, uh, he's cleaning up. So you can take a look at it, it looks all right. You know, I, I like the way of putting in different grasses and whatnot together. I, I just feel it just gives a little bit more of a realistic look to it. Um, edging looks good. You know, everything lines up well. So, you know, you guys, I hope this helps. Um, if you like it, make sure that you share it with others. Uh, subscribe to my channel. And next time... We'll figure that out. So until then, thanks. This is Boone from Boone's Lock Car Garage, and I'll see you guys later.